Welcome to K-Drama School. I'm your host, Grace Jung, and class is now in session. It's a KBS drama that catapulted Chiju and Peyung Jun's careers and turned them into mega Hallyu stars. Chiju already had a bit of Hallyu fame because she was in that show Beautiful Days with Lee Byung Hun just a year earlier. But co starring with Peyung Jun is really what made Chiju Hu really, really famous in Japan because middle aged Japanese women love nothing more. Than a little bit of Peyong Jun, aka Yon Sama. Peyong Jun did so well as an actor that he was able to retire early in 2017, and now he just runs his own talent agency and some other businesses on the side. And he's married to former K pop star Park Soo Jin of the girl group Sugar, who also worked as an actress. He has two kids with her. Here's the thing I have trouble understanding about Peyong Jun's career decision like, didn't you love acting? Like, was acting not your passion? I I think it's okay that people change and they change their minds or they change their careers or whatever, but it's art, you know? Like, Peyong Jin did have a pretty long career, though. He was active since the early 90s, and he was in a hugely popular TV show called First Love, which came out in 1996. Like, it just doesn't occur to me as an artist to retire from art. If that makes sense, you know, like I can't imagine retiring from stand up comedy. I can't imagine retiring from writing. You know, those are things that I would like to do until the day I die. And I consider performance as an art form. So my question is, like, how can you retire as an artist? Like, is it enough for Peyong Jun to just be a husband and a father and a business owner? Does he have another creative outlet? These are just questions I have. I'm just genuinely curious because I don't know. And it's not like he was a bad actor. He was a pretty good actor. So that, that makes me all the more curious. Like, wh- what do you do creatively? Winter Sonata has a very sad story attached to it. So actor Park yong ha who played Chi Ji-woo's childhood boyfriend, he committed suicide in the year 2010. And he was very close to So ji who I recall seeing very broken up when... Park Yong Ha passed away. Winter Sonata was written by Oh Soo Yeon, who also wrote the show Autumn in My Heart, aka Kal Dong Ha, and that one stars Song Ye Kyo and Song Seung Han, of course. And it was co-written by Kim Eun Hee and Yoon Eun Kyung. So the Kim Eun Hee that I mentioned here is not the writer who wrote Kingdom and Signal. That's a different Kim Eun Hee. They just happen to have the same name. But the main credit for Winter Sonata goes to Oh Soo Yeon. And Winter Sonata is part of a series with love and seasons. So you have Autumn in My Heart, Winter Sonata, Summer Scent, and then Spring Waltz, which I never saw. I never saw Spring Waltz because it just looks like a really bad show. You know, Winter Sonata is highly entertaining because that has all the elements of a of a standard K-drama from this time period. So you have like Family Secret, Incest, Amnesia, Doppelganger, right? You have complicated love square. All of these things make for a very juicy show. So it's highly entertaining. They don't really quite make shows like this anymore, I feel like, you know? It's like it's either the Makchang is so ridiculous that you're making fun of it, or it's so realistic and pragmatic that you don't get any of these like insane, heinous, you know, what have you. But that's sort of what makes K drama so entertaining. I don't know. That's just that's just my opinion. Today's guest is comedian Willie Simon. He's an LA-based comedian. He's originally from Hawaii, but he works at the Hollywood Improv, so I see him pretty much every single week. And Willie is a very talented comic. He's super funny. And the flashcard series on this episode is particularly epic. So really buckle in, you guys. It's going to be a good one. So let's talk to Willie Simon. Yeah, not bad. I'm just uh, waiting on a new fridge. So that's... Uh... That's exciting. Yeah, it's always good. Those that's guys give you the whole work day. They're always like, we'll be yeah. here from 9 to 5. I'm like, yeah, I knew that. Dude. You have to tell me that. I had a feeling. That's how it is, man. 
No, I I know that feeling. Like when I was、uh, in middle school, my parents had just bought this like new house. It was like a big deal. It was like the first time they bought a house, and there was furniture coming in. And my dad had to go to work, but he couldn't because these guys said they were gonna deliver by like noon. But it was like four、yeah. p.m. and they just—he was so mad that he was like yelling at me. He's like, "It's because of you and your furniture." I was like, "All right, Dad." Like, yeah, right. We all know that that's not what this is about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's always、yeah. uh, a good parental thing. They're like, "Why, is, why did、yeah. you make the repair man come late?" <laughs> yeah, blame the child. <laughs> um, and that's such an LA thing too. Like, we have to buy a fridge, right? Like, yeah, nowhere else you got to get a new. Fridge, mine, uh, mine went out, but we had to like buy that fridge that went out. And we gotta buy this new one. It's like, yeah, it's a pain in the ass.、But. It's a real pain in the ass. It's like it was kind of psychotic. Like it was very jarring when I first moved to LA, and you know, because I've been living alone since I was like eighteen, and every unit I ever moved to always had a fridge, had a stove. It was just, yeah, these, these were just like basic things. But in LA, there are plenty of places. With very high rent, where there is no stove, no fridge, some don't、yeah. even have a sink.、It's、like a toilet in the kitchen, you're like, what the hell? Why is this two thousand dollars? It's insane. I hate.、Really、I I don't understand why、up. people. They just nickel and dime you. They're like, how many things? Like one landlord figured out he could sell the fridge and stove after the last guy left, and they're like, I'll just make everything. Yeah. yeah. Then, no, it's really messed up. I I, whatever. Who cares?、Uh, what part of town you live in? I'm in the valley. I'm in Van Nuys. Oh,、really? oh my God, we're neighbors. Yeah, like Bubble Lake. No way. Dude, hell yeah. We are neighbors. Valley's, I Valley's live, great. I live on Sepulveda and Sherman. No fucking way. We're like <laughs> I'm on、uh, Heskel and、uh, I had to look outside. It's not outside. I don't know why I looked over. Um, <laughs> Heskel and、uh, Van Owen. <laughs> yeah, I'm like.、Oh Dude, yeah, we、I'm、could like, like walk like, to each other's houses. We should do that someday, just to like do it and high five、yeah. and just walk back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'll take five minutes. We probably should have done this、uh, this podcast not remotely then. If we're three yeah, we should have done it like you know on <laughs> like, outside.、Regular. Yeah. No, I have yeah, this、exactly. fucking guy right. He's power. He's power washing the courtyard like today. Why? Like why now? It's so loud. Yeah. It's so obnoxious. Right now he's on a break, but in about like three minutes he's gonna start up again. So if you hear a, a、yeah. humming, that's what that is.、Um, okay, yeah, we have a, a lady just bleaching.、Uh, they bleach like the whole place once a week, and that's how、uh-huh. they clean it. But they、uh-huh. bleach the elevator, and it's、oh. like an enclosed there. So you're like in the elevator, just getting like fuck. You can feel the brain cells. It's like <laughs> I'm doing a whip it every time I go to the garage. I'm like <laughs> fucking myself up on bleach. <laughs> Uh, we need a new、uh, cleaning thing for this closed space, or, or a window in this elevator, or something. <laughs> Some <laughs> aeration. Gas people. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's fucked it up. Fucking... No, it could it could be triggering for some people, you know. Like it's it's、yeah. it does remind you of a gas、uh, chamber. You're in an enclosed space. You yeah. To shower and it's not. They're gonna kill you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone in the elevator. Why the elevator? <laughs> Or it could be like、uh, if you were like addicted to huff and paint, that could be like a relapse thing. Like you know, if you do heroin, you get like a tooth removed, and、yeah. then you go back. It's kind of like the、yeah. paint thing. Ooh, I used I to have a big、so、paint、many. problem, but then I got a, then I got clean. You go in the elevator. Oh no! <laughs> It's all a, coming back. I need a bag and some spray paint. <laughs> no, it's fucked up. Uh, no, uh, somebody I know, she had brain surgery, and. She's she's like AA, like she's sober, and she wrote、mm-hmm. a note saying, "Please do not administer any narcotics." Like so, she just fought through the pain when she came back. Jeez. Yeah. Oh my when god. When she came back to from the surgery, that that is some fucking hardcore shit, right? That's that's、hardcore. some will to live shit right there. You're like, not only do I want to survive this brain surgery, but I also want to stay sober after. I want to keep going the way I'm going. Yeah, Good for her,、right. that is determination to not、yeah. fall off the wagon. I was like, yeah, seriously, my, my hats off to you. Not only my hat, but my underwear, like everything, everything、yeah. off to you. I know. <laughs> How long you been in LA for? Um, five five years. I moved here in 2017. All right. Yeah, 2017. Did you move straight、yeah. from Hawaii? No, I was up in a、uh, college in Seattle for a little bit, and then I moved back to Hawaii,、mm-hmm. and、uh, 
a few months. I was working at some bar. Um, mm -hmm. It was like a, a Morimoto's, actually. It was a really nice bar. It was wow. like the uh, yeah. like uh, the Iron Chef guy. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I was making a lot of money doing that. And I was like, yeah. I could make less money. And I moved to L.A. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I can't. I can't make less money. I miss that. I miss that job, honestly, just for the just for the money. And being in Hawaii, also. You could but. probably get a, a an easy. You could probably easily get a job at like a high end Michelin star restaurant now that you have that working experience from Morimoto, though, don't you think? And it's true. I know. I'd want like a day shift. Like that'd be if I can get a day shift, like a, a, a nice shift lunch at a shift at a Michelin star place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those are the yeah. best. That it's like yeah. common in Hawaii because it's like, oh, we're right by the beach and I'll right. I'll drink a pina colada. Right. And you paid sixty dollars for it. Exactly. But not here. It's harder to do. That. Yeah, everybody's in vacation mode over there, kind of. Yeah. In a, in a way, we get like the prince. Yeah. No, go ahead. And we get like uh, we get like royalty coming to that restaurant and stuff. There was like the yeah. prince of some African country came one God time damn. and he just ordered yeah. fucking everything. He's all like crazy, like king robes and stuff. Yeah. Like, this guy. <laughs> Yeah, he's eating like royalty. That's <laughs> yeah, because the Morimoto's, and I'm like, I'm like smoking up a whiskey glass for him. I'm like, dude, I'm high as shit. I shouldn't be serving a king right now, but yeah, here I am. Yeah, where in Hawaii did you grow up? Uh, Maui. Oh wow, wow. Yeah, on the south side. Shit. Good times. Yeah, that's the that's the nice one. That's the real touristy one, kind of now. But... Hawaii's like epically beautiful you know how people just say like oh yeah hawaii's paradise whatever and i used to just take it very for granted but when i went there i was like fuck i understand what they meant yeah the, no like the mountains and stuff against like oh every time yeah really? you definitely have to leave to have it register mm -hmm. like growing up you know you're just like yeah it's like any small town you're like fucking yeah. your friends are all doing oxycontin and you're like i guess the mountains are pretty but everyone's doing <laughs> oxycontin <laughs> Yeah. And other things to worry about. <laughs> yeah. When you go yeah. back, it's like, oh, this is nice. It is. It is. And uh, no, that the small town field that actually I knew a friend. Uh, we used to work together. She she grew up in Honolulu. And that's what she mm -hmm. said. She was like, people have this like high thing about Hawaii, but it's very uh, provincial in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. she like, and then she moved to New York. Like she went to college in New York because she wanted to be in like a urban city that's like, you know, keeping up with trends and whatnot. And she was like, whenever I go yeah. back to Hawaii, it just feels very provincial again. But that is mm -hmm. something that she said. Yeah. Yeah. Honolulu is uh, Honolulu's like a bigger city to uh, mm -hmm. to me. But maybe yeah. like growing up there, it's probably totally different. I bet it's like, you know, it's a it's a big city, but only by like island standards. You know what I mean? It's not like. Exactly. I mean, I think there's like a million people in the city or something. Like it's still pretty big, yeah. but. Sure. Not like yeah. uh, like L.A. is what, like 30 million or something crazy, uh -huh. you know, it's like fucking so. Yeah. A, mil a million is not that many people when you really think about it. Like city wise, <laughs> it seems like a ton of people. But then you really think about it, you're like, how do I know? Yeah. How do I when know we... most of these million people? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. When we hear the word million, we're just like, oh, million. Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. But yeah, in comparison. Yeah. Like New York is also a huge city. Yeah. It's funny how like the number of people determines the size of the city and it's, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, quality somehow. That's actually a, yeah. an interesting point. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Seriously. You need to, uh, you gotta have more people for more ideas of things to do, I guess. Cause most people don't want to create a, like a venue or whatever makes cities fun, you know, parks. No. I don't know where parks come yeah. from, but yeah. I guess from, uh, if there's enough people that demand a park, you know, that's yeah. All. Like yeah, <laughs> enough people have to whine and bitch about it and ask for it. Yeah, and yeah. the more the greater diversity of people that you have, the more of those things would come up. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. Okay, yeah. uh, why Seattle? It's, it's like rainy. It's very different from Hawaii. Um, I just did it because uh, it was the one college I got into that was in a city, and I wanted okay. to do stand up. So I uh, ah. yeah, so I was like, this is in a city. I can do comedy multiple nights a week. I started doing it in high school. Yeah. And uh, there was one mic a week at this old venue called Stella Blues, which was really fun. It was like yeah. in the back of this, like, uh, it was like half restaurant and then the back half was just this venue and it was perfect yeah. room for stand up. Yeah. Um, it closed down like a year into me doing it, but. Uh, oh, shit. That was, that was the best though. I love that place. 
Yeah. It was like Grateful Dead themed. It was super wow. weird. Wow. Super weird place. Oh, but, yeah. that's very Seattle. Like that feel. Yeah. No, this is in Maui. Oh, it's a Maui. What the fuck? Yeah. This is when you were starting in high school out in Maui. Whoa. Yeah. So it was oh, a little and tiny, I guess uh, uh, Grateful Dead bar. <laughs> like, I guess that's actually badass. I I love that. But that's interesting because you were underage, I suppose. So I guess you had to start at a restaurant as opposed to like a bar yeah. or a club. Well, I had to get a a license, like a liquor license. Like I got the same thing in order to work in restaurants. I started working when I was like fifteen or sixteen or something at I this uh, other restaurant, and I had to get this license to be able to yeah. be around alcohol. And I had to get the same thing for uh, stand up. It's like an entertainment license. I still have it somewhere around here. But oh wow, yeah. that's interesting. That's yeah. the thing. Like you know, you're like you're like mid twenties, right? You're like twenty five or something. Or yeah, I'm twenty six. Yeah, 26 I just turned twenty six. So. Oh, congr- oh really? January baby. Uh, last month, so December. Last month, December. So you're Sagittarius. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of milking it. it. Was just my birthday. It's really been like a month and or two almost. You know, so it's not really just my birthday. But yeah, no, you gotta enough. milk your birthday. <laughs> Come on, it's special. You know, you came yeah, into exactly. being. You know, it's, it's yeah. Twenty six is a big year. It that's is. really everyone's like that's an important year. <laughs> No, it's not at all. It's, it's, it's just it's, it's just a, a number. least consequential year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I was at this mic uh, over at. Uh, do you know that Ohio Bar Five One Three? It's in North Hollywood, next to Republic of Pi on Magnolia. Oh, they do job. they do open mics on Mondays, and there was this kid who went up on oh, stage. He's like, I just turned twenty four, and he's like t- going on about it as if it's anything. And I'm just like, 24, like, why is that even an age to mention? It sounds gross, you know? I was like, yeah, the year you were born, Titanic was on the big screen, you know? Like, that's that's all yeah. I kept thinking, you know? In I know. Case. I saw the, uh, yeah. I saw him, uh, it was like a legal age to buy alcohol, some 2000, and that just blew my fucking mind. I was like, 2000? <laughs> or 2001, I think. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm like I'm I'm a bit older than you are. So like you know, back in 2000, like I was like I remember holding an infant baby that had just been born the year 2000. I was like, "Oh my god, this baby was born in the year 2000. It's crazy." You know? Yeah. Um No, I mean, yeah, I, I it, we're but that's what happens as you get older. You just like look at other people who are younger than you are and you just like, "Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy that life was coming into being while I was walking around with consciousness and it's like elderly yeah. people talk, you know? No, and I don't feel older. I just see everyone else getting older also. And I'm like, man, look at all these aging young people. Not me, though. <laughs> everyone else is aging. I'm yeah, good. look at these washed up hags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Put on some night cream. Oh, you're drinking yeah. already anyway. <laughs> just like me, I'm also 21. You're 21 now, too? So what am I. What the fuck? <laughs> You're 21 no, this... and then you're 30. That's the all the middle. Your 20s don't even fucking. Yeah, it doesn't mention. count. Just say you're in your 20s. Yeah. You're like, what? I don't really care. Everything else is you like, You know all cares. the same stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. After you turn 21, you're like glad. And then the rest of the time, you're just sad because you're drunk all the time. And then you turn 30 yeah, and then you're exactly. like officially sad. You're like, oh, I'm going to die now. Like I'm 30. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and the glory years are over. That was fast. Yeah. As if they Always. were. So I don't cool. know. Do Do you feel like right now the present moment, these times are glory years for you? I guess in a way. I mean, I'm having fun. I'm enjoying where uh, how things are going. I guess stand up wise, yeah. and uh, you know, nothing yeah. big is happening at all. But I think it's. Uh, I don't feel like I'm going backwards anymore, which is nice. You know, there so you go. it's uh, just um, yeah. I think it's fun. It's it's hard to appreciate this middle part. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But. Uh, Mm-hmm. when you uh when you can it's it's nice you know like i was at uh yeah. i just did a mic last night just hanging out at the uh, third wheel and there's like fonto yeah. handron yeah um just like a bunch of friends i know yeah i'm not gonna be able to you know be around in another year or two you know when everyone starts leaving and doing road shit or whatever the hell it yeah. is you know so it's like oh, it yeah. is hard to remember to appreciate this like mm. big community stuff because mm-hmm. pretty soon it's just gonna be like you know, sitting around lonely in a town you've never heard of. You're like, man, remember that open mic that I hated at the time? I, was there. I know, so. DMing young women online being like, hey, I saw you liked my tweet. You want to hang out? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's, so what lonely road... last night. <laughs> that's what lonely road comics end up doing. Like, that's what I noticed. Um, they just start yeah. DMing bitches on, on Twitter that liked their tweets. Like, that's what ends up happening. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. but that's that's. I mean, yeah, you got all this time. Mm-hmm. 
yeah that's sweet like yeah, you're <laughs> you're being present you know you're being yeah. present in the present moment and showing gratitude i think that's great yeah yeah thank you i'm uh i'm really enlightened i'm a really enlightened guy no I'm kidding. yeah <laughs> like do you meditate and shit do you collect crystals no i just uh i'm just uh, i was just born this way i guess I oh wow yeah yeah <laughs> i was yeah. just i'm like the i'm like the dalai lama you know what i mean just, oh they just, they, yeah yeah just born this way born born into nirvana yeah, okay just born holy that's just uh <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I always love watching you on stage because you always have this comfort because, you know, you've been doing it for 10, 11 years now. You're just very comfortable on stage, you know, very relaxed, very at home. And then as an audience member, like we feel relaxed and at home and comfortable, too, when we mm -hmm. watch a comic be that relaxed and at home on stage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. That's... um. It's definitely taken a little while. Um, yes. All, uh, all eight years of it. You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, it's um, yeah. It's good to finally feel a little better. That's for sure. It's, I think um, so too. I think so too. Yeah. And you're also a really excellent writer. Like, whenever I listen to your jokes, I'm just like, yeah, he really, he really like detailed this, like, took every bit of fat out of this topic, wrote it out worked it out please you know? thank you no i appreciate that <laughs> Stop um, it. <laughs> when when do you feel like you're writing your best like is there a ritual or do you make it a habit or like when do you feel the most juiced up and inspired and you're like writing 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 is there like a a thing um it comes in waves i try to write every day i just like get up and i'll write for an hour or two and just try to yeah just yeah. make sure I'm uh, doing that that groundwork. Um, sure. And usually nothing happens. Most days I'm like, I didn't write anything good. This is all garbage, and most yeah. of it never sees the light of day. Yeah. But uh, you know, some it's just uh, I guess the challenge is make yourself laugh. That's what I try to always do. Just if I can exactly. make myself laugh, then yeah, you know that means it's surprising enough that other people who didn't think of it will still will also laugh, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, if there's a if I get on a line where I can actually I'm like this is this is funny I'm making myself mm -hmm. laugh, mm -hmm. um I'll go deeper into that and uh, try to just pick it apart as much as I can and uh, yeah mm -hmm. it doesn't happen most times like mm -hmm. there'll be like weeks I've like, I've had like a month where I just haven't had anything good but I know you gotta keep trying <laughs> you gotta keep writing so. that's why that's why your jokes are like like they feel like whole meals because. You're, de you're a dedicated writer like that. I agree in this uh, belief that a writer should write every single day, you know, even if yeah. it's like not a complete joke, like set up punchline, the whole thing, even if it's just a few ideas, a few thoughts, they write every single day, then it's a habit and they're milking that muscle and eventually it's going to click. At some point mm -hmm. it's going to click. So uh, I, I admire that discipline that you have and I think that's important. That sets apart a lot of you know, I don't know, respectful comedians from, from the riffraff, so to speak, you know? Yeah, 100%. No, I hear, um, I hear all my favorite comics are like, if you're like, write every day, just anything. Yeah. Like yeah. that, Ralphie May always just talk about that. Just literally, it can be a page, it can be half a page, mm -hmm. be a sentence, just if mm -hmm. that's all you got in your fucking tank today, that's all you got. And yeah. that's totally fine. Exactly. Um, I, it's hard not to get discouraged sometimes, so, you know, when oh, you're yeah. like, Wow, just a, just this little bad paragraph or this one little bad premise yes. is all I got today. But yes, you never know. Then the next day, it's fucking pages on pages or something. Exactly. So. It's, it's a, just a yeah. It's it's uh it's not really. I don't know. Like I I did that artist's way book, and Julia Cameron talks about like she's like oh don't think about the quality. You know, just work on the quantity. Like that's all you got to focus mm -hmm. on, and eventually like the great creator spirit is going to make it all fall into place or whatever the fuck, you know? Yeah, but it's really exactly. that act of doing is like showing to yourself the evidence of the work, you know, and mm -hmm. showing yourself that you are on your way towards the thing that you want to be or the, the place that you want to get to. At least you're doing the work so that you're not sulking and sitting back being like, oh, I didn't do jack shit today and da 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 da. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So, and you can sulk and not and do deck shit at night, and you're like, man, I'm so great. <laughs> I, I did the work. I can watch four hours of Boba Fett. You know what I mean? I can fucking <laughs> yeah. can stay up till yeah. 4 a.m. <laughs> killing all yeah. my brain cells with other shit. Exactly. You know? so, I did some I, today. Exactly. And, like, you know, I, I'm trying to get to a place where, because, you know, like, since we're comics, we're artists, like, I do so much during the day. Like, I don't fucking work a job right now. I'm not working a job, per se, but I am working constantly, right? And, mm -hmm. like, yesterday, I was a little burnt out. Like, I was very low on, like, brain fuel and energy. And I still went to a mic, and, like, I was kind of like, ah, oh, like, I wasn't all there. But I was like, all right, but I still did it, you know? And in the future, I just know, like, when I'm low on my fuel tank like that, like, brain brain cell-wise and my energy-wise, I just know, like, to just take a day off and just be like, I did a lot today, so let me just credit myself with that and be okay with just resting, you know? I think, I yeah, think artists struggle totally. with that, too, right? Yeah, no, not no, you got to be able to take a break for sure. It's like, uh, it's like any other muscle, you know, if you exercise seven days a week, eventually you're going to get hurt because you don't have, you know, your body isn't supposed to work that hard. Your brain's a muscle. It's the same thing. You gotta, yeah. you gotta have your days where you're like, I'm going to sleep until two today. Cause I don't have to work <laughs> till six <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I don't do anything. Today. And that's, yeah. and that's fine. You know, you have those once a week and you're, yeah. I think you're healthier for it. Mm. Do you uh, go back to Seattle often to do shows? No, I haven't been, uh. Really? I haven't been in years. Um, wow. If I do go, kinda... it's for, I try to just book shows and yeah. Um, try. I'll try to do some mics here and there to see people. But um, if I'm going all that way, I really want to make sure I'm getting like shows and stuff. So yeah. There's a couple of places I know will let me headline. So I'll go up and headline those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe and, and just try to try to do like if I'm on the road, I really want to do time. I can't get here. You know, if I can get time here. I'll just do it here, you know. I don't need to do yeah. three minutes in Seattle. I'll do it yeah. at the Improv. <laughs> like it's just it's dumb sure. to go all the way that far. Definitely. So, um, yeah, mm. I think. Uh, and then you know, setting up, meeting people in other cities, you do have to go do mics, and that's kind of just part of uh, mm -hmm. part of it. But also, people. What's nice about being in a mecca of comedy like Los Angeles is, um, yeah, people come here. You know, people For come sure. here from all over the country. Yeah, I met some dude from Minnesota the other day. Yeah. I've never been to Minnesota, but I can now hit them up about show spots or whatever it is, you Definitely. know, and I'm, I can skip that whole going to a city, losing yeah. tons of money, doing open mics and then flying yeah. back. <laughs> like, yeah. So now it's like I can go, I can at least break even. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's not, um, I think it's all about making this sustainable. I think that's the real yeah. hard part with, uh, with the road and with stand up. It's like, how can I make yeah. this an actual thing I'm able to do financially you know because mm -hmm. if you if you can't do it financially you can't do it if you're stuck in la all the time and I, I don't think you can really get really good here i think you can get good here i don't think you can get great here you have to go out and do the road you have to get real time you have to get 100%. you have to be comfortable doing 45 minutes an hour 30 minutes 20 minutes whatever it is that you can't get here consistently you know i agree so uh well then that's the question i'm having it's like why did you choose la and not new york I didn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, now I'm here. So I'm like, well, fuck. Yeah, Are you serious? Was, well, it was also, it was close to Hawaii. And I was uh, like, true. oh, this is uh, it's close to Weather's home. Nicer. And LA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't know what, um, I really didn't know the difference. I was like, LA and New York, they're the same thing. And I got here. Um, I lived here about a year and I was like, I should have gone to New York for sure. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I like it here. You know, it's fun. Yeah. It's sunny. It it's nice. never cold. <laughs> That's what I, uh, I'm saying. I've People met my girlfriend out here. here. You know, we yeah. live together. Yeah, yeah exactly. I've built People a life here, and I, I like it. People are generally happier here. Uh, I think in terms of stand-up writing and discipline in New York, they're, they are they do excel. Like, a lot mm -hmm. of comics there are real comics, like gritty, nitty-gritty comics. Yeah. But here you get so many characters and actors and improv people who want to do stand up on the side or something. And then that sort of mm -hmm. like, you know, sets, I don't know, it, there's a difference that you feel. Yeah. I well, I think a lot of New York comics yeah. sound very similar to, you know, not to be a. And they're, a lot of them are really funny and really unique, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of New York comics when they come out here, I feel like. They all kind of have the same kind of hive mind of how to write jokes and stuff. And uh, what I like about LA is there's so many, 
fucking weirdos. Yeah. And so there's not really this like consistent way to write jokes. Yeah. You're able to, you, yeah. you have to find a way to stand out outside of just your writing or your, just your, uh, whatever your, um, that, that kind of, that New York stand up presence. You know what I mean? You have to do something a little different. And uh, really I, I appreciate that. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think I think it'll help you also when you go out there too. Like, there's yeah. not a lot of act outs in New York comedy. There's a ton of it out here, and so that's something that's oh. unique to mm -hmm. unique mm -hmm. to LA. So if you can pair mm -hmm. like a New York style writing with some act outs and LA style stand up, that's a that's fusion, man. That's that's fucking that's that's cool. I, uh, I love that stuff. <laughs> so it's uh, yeah. That's like getting to like like Louis Anderson level. Like he was so good at like act outs and good writing and Yeah. Patrice O'Neill, fucking Sarah Silverman. You know, there's like Yeah, I know Louis fucking he was so good at it. Sarah Silverman. Yeah, Louis was, so was amazing. He was a yeah. he was a behemoth, yeah. I had the yeah, pleasure of seeing Louis Anderson at the Largo. It was like Louis and Friends, and Sarah Silverman was also in the lineup and Oh, that's like, great. he was just so good, like so good and not in like a mean cutting, like kind of New York style way. He was just like loving and but like pro, you know, just pro. Yeah. It wasn't like fucking being a teacher up there. He was a pro comic. So funny. I had so much respect for him after I saw that show, but yeah. Yeah, he, he was no, really, he was amazing. He was really he's something. totally committed to every detail of like what he's saying. His body's committed to his words and like that's super, <laughs> yeah. that's just a, that's a technique that's just so hard to fucking master with that shit, you know, just being like, yeah. you know, you're, uh, when he's doing it, when he's on the phone, he's on the phone. He's not pretending to be on the phone. He's like, he's on yeah. the phone you know and that, that's where it's like there he it's just there. another level yeah, yeah. yeah it's just another level of presenting and uh delivering stuff where you're just like man the uh he moves the mic he, stand like let me get this out of the way so you can see me <laughs> yeah 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 he's he said that was awesome like one man. of his first jokes that he ever wrote yeah <laughs> yeah that's, uh, uh, that's the classic louis, and louis bit but man that guy was he's great. so good like he's he's a mastered he was a mastered performer i think that's what we're admiring yeah. him for like everything, yeah exactly he everything was performing in that moment you know it wasn't just his voice it wasn't just his jokes it was everything all of his gestures all of his facial expressions the way of his voice you know uh yeah i i totally love that also but going back to the whole like new york comedians thing that's something i noticed when i mean you and i were both there together but like jessica Curson and rachel feinstein were performing that night in the lab oh the yeah lab, right and yeah. Uh, Rachel Feinstein is very much this New York Jewish comedian and she's like fast, rhythmically fast, fast, fast. So you have to stay, you have to keep up with her pace. And that's mm -hmm. sort of how like you listen to like Mark Norman and like Joe List and Sam Morrill, like they're very fast, got this pace, mm -hmm. like, you know, that New York rapid speed, that rhythm. And, <laughs> and in the lab, like in LA, they, the audience was just like, fucking stupid you know or burnt out or something and they were just yeah. like not well, not on top of it you know yeah like yeah the lab just sucks sometimes <laughs> yeah it just she like it's not that her jokes are bad it's not that her performance was bad it was all like a plus work but it just wasn't meshing with the crowd and their vibe and their rhythm which was far yeah. slower way slower yeah right yeah, no, and that's and that's something that's hard to do too. Where it's like, uh, you know, if you're if you have a way of doing stuff and you can't adjust to the crowd that you're doing, you know, you're gonna have a. Uh, um, I think staying present is a really something I really admire in comics, um, yeah. and that's really hard to uh, to do. That's what I love about Jessica Kirsten. Jessica oh. Kirsten, she is completely in the moment with the crowd. Like, wherever she is, she's fast. She's committed to the yeah. bits, but she's also here with them. And that's yeah. like, and that's, that's, that's getting everyone in the zone. That's real energy transfer kind of stuff, you know, that like you're not just yes. kind of reciting stuff at people. And that's, um, it's yes. a hard skill. I, um, it is. that's something I really try to, um, try to do it. I don't always, uh, do it, but it's something that's always on the forefront of my mind of like, how do I be present with these people? Right. It's like people like Kirsten, people like fucking like Patrice O'Neill before he yeah. died, you know, like all the, all the videos of him just being like. Why aren't you laughing at that? Or like, why did you laugh at that? Like, just being, being <laughs> yeah. here with everybody, you know? And that's like, that's yeah. so impressive to me.
It's yeah. A, uh, I think yeah. it comes with a sense of fearlessness of the crowd. Like you can't be afraid of them because when yeah. you're ignoring how they're responding and you just keep going, you're, it's like you're ignoring the thing that you're afraid of, you know? Like a dog is yeah, barking and they can you. smell that too. Yeah, yeah, they. They're they like, why do I think I like, keep going? <laughs> yeah, they almost feel neglected, <laughs> or they're like, "Is this crazy? Well. Like, is this a madness happening?" You know, yeah. got to acknowledge no, the crowd for the unique creature that they are. Whenever you encounter them, each one is going to be unique and different, right? And their response yeah, will be exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You got to. Uh... Mm. You gotta make it an experience. I think that's what's mm -hmm. so cool about live stand up is um yes. like from recording like yes. a, a special, you know, you might wanna just be like, This is the material I wrote and this is how you do it and all that right. stuff. Um right. but like the cool part about live shit that, you know, I that's I hopefully we don't I think we're obviously we're not gonna lose it to Zoom comedy because nobody likes it. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. but why yeah. it's so fun though is because yeah. it's like we're all here in this and this could Jokes can happen that'll never happen again, and some things can exactly. happen that never happen again. Same thing with live music. When you see, exactly. that's why people like jam bands, like Fish, and they're like, "This is never gonna happen again." Also, yeah. I'm high as shit on drugs, but <laughs> yeah. this is also never gonna happen again. And that's really cool. And, yeah, uh, there's something about yeah. the the shared experience of of stand up that's uh, mm -hmm. that's what makes becoming, it beautiful. Becoming one in that time and space, you know, and yeah, then letting a bunch of strangers through. pretending they're friends for an yes. hour. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's pretty it, cool. There's a lot of love there. Yeah. And the way that Jessica Kirsten also approaches that, like, she always says, like, she always picks some people when she's doing crowd work and she'll always say, oh, I love you. Like, I love you. Right? Yeah. And that's, like, nice to hear. And it's also that's super the important. exact opposite of being afraid of them and yelling at them, for instance, being like, this is a good joke. What the fuck you for not laughing or yeah. ignoring well, I think that's their response. You know, like people yeah. getting mad. That's when you're afraid. If someone doesn't laugh and you can be like, why didn't you? And like, come at it from a place of love. That's yes. not that's not fear. That's yes. That's being with them and stuff. You yes. know, and that's um, yes. even like Jessica. You watch Jessica Kirsten do it all the time. You know, it's yeah. just uh, I love people her. like that. Um, and a lot of those old New York guys, uh, uh, birds the same way, you know, um, mm. Attell, like all those people. Mm. they're like they're not um they're not angry someone didn't laugh they're not angry you heckled they want to know yeah. why like what is, what's going <laughs> yeah. on with you, you know? it just like, needs to make sense to what's, them what's going on yeah we all yeah. need to know what the hell's going on with you now because yeah, you're it's, fucking, it's, you're the odd like, one out and we have to acknowledge that and that's exactly uh, it's like asking your loved one like what's wrong when they're ass acting weird you know it's yeah it's or like love. a friend being like what the fuck yeah. was that dude <laughs> it's yeah. a different place of like i hate yeah. you but you gotta be like <laughs> What was that about? Dude? That was awful. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Whereas, like you know, if they're acting all weird and you ignore it and pretend like it's not happening, then it's like that's yeah. like negligence and abandonment. Well, and and then it just hovers over the group, and the whole group is like, "That was a weird thing," and none of us are acknowledging it. And there's something about that energy, you know, like when when someone yeah. says something fucking just a little off in the car, and everybody's kind of silent. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and you're you gotta acknowledge you're like hey man that was shitty or that was stupid and then everyone can laugh at him and yeah relief and peace in the world you know break the tension but, uh, exactly yeah that's exactly. our job yeah yeah for real oh, and then joey diaz is great with that too where he he gets up yeah. and he's like uh he's like look at you sick motherfuckers coming out to watch stand up you're the greatest motherfuckers in the world like he just uh -huh. he comes out and he's like i love you guys thanks for coming yeah. out we, we wouldn't be able to do this without you. Like, just comes out immediately. He's like, fucking love you guys. Now I'm going to say some shit. And you can, right. you can just, you don't, you can get away with saying whatever you want if it comes with a place, you know, where everyone knows. It's like, hey, we're all on a, we're all in a good mood here. No one's trying to say anything mm -hmm. to, like, start a rally or fucking, mm -hmm. like, piss someone off or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. It's uh, showing, yeah. showing appreciation off the top and setting yeah. the tone from the beginning to, be like oh i have control now it's all good we're good let's go yeah oh that's yeah. smart that's smart um i was at a, a show i was hosting like the other week and you know it was a great crowd and uh the person i mean as it typically happens right uh the producer goes up he's not a very strong comedian well i'll just put it that way he's good at tiktok wait, wait a show producer isn't good at comedy Hang on. Are you telling me someone who runs a show to get stage time 
isn't very good. <laughs> That's fucking. You're blowing my mind right now. That's so <laughs> mouth. He even told me he's like, don't, don't introduce me as the producer. Just say like the, my credits. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> I know, like, I think your credit is producing the show. <laughs> but what was funny to me, what was funny to me is he gets off, right? He was like, he was like around the middle time. He gets off stage and then the crowd was like dead, right? <laughs> the yeah. energy had dro dropped, plummeted. And he was just like, like the energy was pretty high in the beginning. I don't know what happened. Like, I know what happened. <laughs> he had totally absolved himself of what he had done and had no recognition, acknowledgement whatsoever of what yeah, that's my, happened. That's my and, favorite. People just get off after bombing. They're like, how about that? Huh? And they're like, high five for people. <laughs> they're like, dude, that was horrible. What are you talking about? How fucking suck you ruined and the, the crowd is mad now. My favorite is fucking people... Uh, <laughs> People like posting clips of them or people posting pictures of them doing stand up and the whole crowd's like, <laughs> like, like nobody's laughing. Or like, just like angry faces. You're like, dude, you gotta look at the faces of people before you post these pictures. It does not look good. Two it's, people it's smiling, like, anything. Like, that's like just mad at you. that's like that's like excess level. That's like the super ego, like the super consciousness of that denial of ignoring yeah. the crowd that's not receptive it's like beyond that you're not yeah. not only are you gonna not acknowledge it on stage but you're gonna not acknowledge it after you get off stage and to the other comics <laughs> who have all witnessed what went down yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you're just showing me photographic evidence of you bombing and you're like isn't it cool i'm doing stand-up you're like not right now if you're not doing well <laughs> stand -up is only cool if you're doing well if, it's, if you're not it's the worst it's the lamest thing so funny to me it, it, it was just amazing to me i wasn't like judging him like i was just like amazed i was like wow like you blow me away maybe that's why you have so many like tiktok followers or something it's just you really just ignore everything and just keep going keep going yeah you know? for real though and that's like a big thing with tiktok it's just like uh yeah it's just about putting it out consistently you know it's exactly. not about having good videos it's about having a lot of videos and I, I need to, I need to do it too, because it's like, a, it's, it is a good idea. People get booked. People do fucking. People do a lot of good shows. They become TikTok headliners. They... they become headliners because they started TikTok during the pandemic and decided they're going to be a comedian at the end of the pandemic. That's literally yeah. how a lot of these guys became headliners, and they sell out. Well, you know, like. Well, and then people and go watch their shows, and they're like, "This sucks." I guess stand up sucks because this is my favorite comedian, and they never watch comedy again. And they fucking ruin it for us. <laughs> oh god, it's fucking it's all, worst. It's all funny to me. I, I I don't even care honestly. I think it's fucking hilarious. Okay, I, yeah. I know you have to uh, get your fridge. So uh, this is something I do on all of my podcast episodes. So um, I ask you a series of flashcard questions based on a uh, Korean drama, and okay. you just and I, I just describe scenes, and you just answer like what you would do. If you were that character in that moment under these circumstances, okay? Okay, deal. I've watched yes. a few Korean dramas. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm with it. Get? Did you really? <laughs> yeah, or not? Like, like all the popular ones, you know, like Train to really? Busan and like the movies. Oh, okay. And stuff. Yeah, Train those to ones. Busan. Like, nothing fucking good movie. Yeah. Not all the. Uh, not like probably you're probably gonna pull some deep cuts out that I'm gonna be like I regret <laughs> saying I watched Korean dramas. But. This is a deep cut. <laughs> this is a deep cut. It was a it was a historical phenomenon in the year 2002. It was a big fucking deal. Turned the stars into internationally recognizable Korean move uh uh K K drama stars, especially in Japan. And this is an older old school K drama, but the story is fucking bonkers. And I chose it specifically yeah. for you. So let's just have fun with it. Ooh. Think of it as improv. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm in. So let's say, let's say you're a boy named Chun Sang. You're 18 years old, so you're a senior in high school. You moved to okay. a new town. Okay. You were raised by a single mother, and you've been asking your single mother all your life, "Who's your father?" And she just won't answer you. What do you do? Um, you know, I keep uh. I searched for my dad alone without her help. I need to go find out who my father is to complete my spiritual and uh, character arc journey. 
Mm. I need to get these three X wrapped up, you know, so I got to go look for my dad. <laughs> okay. All right, that's a that's good start, good determination. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the setup's there. I mean, of course. Yeah. The hero's journey is Yeah, beginning. exactly. Okay. Yeah, no, no. Someone's not telling you something. I got to go look. And then I meet like a dad's friend at a bar and he's like, your dad was a wizard or something like that. Like, okay. <laughs> and we're getting somewhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Keep the, keep the, keep the script moving forward. Keep the, keep the story yeah. moving forward. Good. I know, okay. I know how stories are built. <laughs> this is going to be the most generic Star Wars ass fucking thing. So. <laughs> I know that. I read that book. <laughs> I'm like, this, this is not a right story. There's no other yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's how to write a K-drama. You have to write it like Star Wars. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's say you're a girl now. Okay, you're a girl named Yujin. And you okay, meet this Yujin. boy, Chun Sang, the new kid who just moved in. And Is that the old guy? Is that that's, the 18-year-old? That's the 18-year-old okay, yeah, kid. Still... And you're, also, okay. you're also an 18-year-old girl. So you're you're both 18. It's, okay. it's cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So and I'm both got... of these people at the same time? No, no. Now, or at now this I'm... point, you are the now girl. I'm... Eugen. Okay. You're Eugen the girl. You're the eighteen year old girl. Okay. And you so meet So my it's not like a hive mind thing between me and the guy. <laughs> no, no. We're 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 like, we like make eye contact, we're like uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking what you're thinking, we're both thinking this. <laughs> 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 no, that would be a better K drama, but right now we're we are resetting <laughs> we're resetting the scene, okay? So you're Eugene, okay. you're eighteen, you meet this eighteen year old boy Chun Sang, and you guys dig each other, okay? You guys even share okay. your first smooch, uh -huh. okay? Oh hell yeah. Boy. Make it out myself. That's totally what I'd do if I was a hive mind also. <laughs> this is exactly what I'd be doing. I'm not convinced that I'm not both characters still. <laughs> Okay. I'd be like, let me, see, let me see your titties, me. You know, only if you show me your dick. I'm like, all right. This is great. <laughs> it's a great show. I want to see it. Yeah. No. Okay. So one day, right? You guys, you guys smooched. But then one day you come to school and everybody in your class is bawling, crying. Turns out Chun Sang is dead. He got hit by a car and died. What do you do? Damn. And I'm not also Chun Sun. No. You're the girl. Okay. You're Eugene. Yeah. Okay. I'm just Eugene. So I'm not like feeling this, like another part of me is dead. I don't know. Maybe I go. So I didn't know. He didn't know his dad also. Did I know? Do I know he didn't know his dad? Yeah. He, you just knew he was like dark and brooding, very goth, you know, like he had problems. You didn't pry, but you know. Okay. You guys well, now I feel like I have to pry. I think mm. now I'm prying. I want to find out the circumstances mm. of uh, Chun San's death. I need to know because we we yeah. smooched, yeah. and that's important so because I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need to know. <laughs> Gotta find out. Gotta it's like through. it's like as you get older, you know, you you kiss someone at a bar and they die. You're like, that's really sad, but I'm not gonna like look into why you died. I'm gonna be like, that's really sad, but I'm not gonna be like upend my life about finding out anything you know yeah you let it go but when you're 18 you're yeah. gonna you're, you're 18 gonna, you're like no <laughs> you're gonna fully identify with it okay all right yeah you're you're still eugene okay you're the chick all right well yeah the and... other guy's dead right uh huh the what? other guy's dead right the other guy's dead your your 18 year old okay. high school boyfriend is dead you're Fuck. eugene you're a grown woman now. Ten years have passed. You're like 28 oh, now. And you're, you're working as an interior designer, kicking ass, okay? One day, okay. you meet an award-winning architect who studied in the U.S. His name is Min Hyung. He Min looks Hyung. identical to your dead high school boyfriend, Shun Sang. And not only that, but your high school rival, this girl named Chedin, she's dating this guy, Min Hyung. Who looks identical Damn. to your dead boyfriend Shin Sang? What do you do? Wait, is he like? Is he also twenty eight, or is he like? He's also twenty eight. Okay, so he's like if if Shun Sang had aged. Okay. Yep. Would have what looked do identical. Do? Yeah. Yeah. Man. What do you do? Well, I can't look crazy. I can't be like you're my dead boyfriend, <laughs> and you stole him from me, you bitch. And I call the friend like I can't do that, especially yeah. if I got a good yeah. job. I'm look yeah. crazy. I don't know. I think you gotta. I think you gotta bide your time. I say do more invest. Every move I've made is investigate more so far, and it never happens. Also, it doesn't look like it ever. No one ever does it. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just... What do I do? What do I do? I, I, uh, I start making out with him super hard to see if it's the same thing. <laughs> if I feel the same way as I did in high school. Right in front of him. That's what I do. You're like, I had to find out. You know? Yeah, I, I, I didn't remember know. the kiss. Yeah, like, I only know I one way him. to find out. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's a great answer. That's a great (laughs) solution. I don't know why they didn't choose that solution in this fucking show. Okay. All right. Yeah, seriously. Let's reset. You're a different person now. You're a different man. Your name is Hang Hyuk. Okay? Holy shit. You and Yujin. There's a lot of brain transfers going on. (laughs) (laughs) Just getting warped around. All right. I'm with with Yujin now. You and Yujin. Wait, hold on. You were so I used childhood, to be and now I'm <laughs> dating her. Okay, yeah, you I've were done ch- so you much were... as you've been. No, it feels the switch just seems. I've been her for so long now. Oh my god! No, you were you were childhood friends, and now you're engaged to Eugene. You love her, oh, yeah. all right? But okay. you see how your girlfriend Eugene is getting all shook and distracted because this Min Young guy reminds yeah, her so she's much of making out with him in front of her <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do to get her back to normal? Hmm. I make out with her rival to make her jealous. That's what I do. <laughs> I'm like, you wanna make out with your your fucking oh, wait, no, she doesn't actually do that. <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, I think I make out with a rival, make her jealous. That's my that's my move. That is a good. I gotta answer. gotta keep this kissing train moving. You know what I mean? I'm, uh, <laughs> that's that's what I'm sticking to. I was all okay, investigating great. early. Now I'm just making out with my adversaries. Okay, perfect answer. Perfect answer. Okay, you're really good at this. Okay, you're another another reset, another bre- brain transfer. I'm sorry, but you are okay, now. Okay. I wasn't attached to that guy very much. Too. There was <laughs> yeah. one one okay. turn. Give yeah. a shit about him. Didn't really know you're, his story. Yeah, he's not that important. You're you Min, you're Min Hyung now. You're Min Hyung. Okay, here we go. You're the architect guy who looks identical to the dead high school kid. You find out that you suffered a severe head trauma in a car accident when you were in high school. Suffered amnesia as a result, and your mom created a whole new life for you by narrating all this bullshit that wasn't even true. Okay. Furthermore. One day, all of your memories from the past come rushing back to you. And you Whoa. go to Yujin and you grab her and you tell her, I'm Chunsang. But she doesn't yeah. believe you. What do you do? Now she doesn't believe me? I'm like, bitch, <laughs> this was your idea. <laughs> That's what I say. I'm angry at her. I, this is bullshit. That's fuck. That's not fair at all. <laughs> That's that's that is infuriating to me. That's what, that's that's where I'm at. I'm angry. Right, that's kind of true. This was never your problem until it became your yeah. problem because of her projections. Yeah, you're the one fucking making me think all this shit, and then now it's real. You're a okay. you're a hypnot. You're a fucking hypocrite. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're you're still the same guy. You're Min Hyung still. You and Eugene talk through it. You rekindled your relationship, okay? You're back together now. You're happy. Wow. You're happy that you got your memory back. You got your woman That's back. Crazy. But wasn't he already dating the other girl? He, yeah, they they for left like, for like just years. <laughs> they they left those people and got back together to get back they to just, each other. Just because they made out in high school once. <laughs> Seems time. crazy. Seems insane. <laughs> Seems insane, but it's happening right now, okay? Yeah, but I'm not in, only yeah. that. No. It's a not only drama, get, I get it. <laughs> not only did you get all your memories back and you're happy with Eugene, but you go to Eugene's house and you're flipping through a photo album and you find a photograph of your mom standing with Eugene's dad and oh, fuck yeah. Sang Hyuk's dad. So this your mom is standing between two two men and they're fathers of people that you know. And okay. <clears throat> Hold on, I, I, this, this is a lot. Okay, so Sangyuk, Sangyuk is Eugene's fiance. Okay, so fiance dad is also there. Your mother 
when you go and ask her what the fuck this is about, your mother tells you that Eugene's dad, your girlfriend's dad, is your dad. That's what she says to you. Okay? okay. Not only that, not only that, but the head injury that you suffered from that car accident is now causing latent blindness and you're about to go fully blind. There's no cure. What do you do? What? Blindness? <laughs> I feel yeah. like I'm more focused on the blindness than anything else, honestly. <laughs> I'm kind of like, all right, let, that whole dating my sister stuff is bad. But did you say blindness? <laughs> That's what I say. I'm like, I think we need to work on this this blindness problem first, and then I'll worry about all the other stuff. I think yeah. I break up with you, Jinx. This is getting too emotionally <laughs> intense for a guy who's about to go blind. And I worry about my, my imminent blindness. <laughs> Okay. It's very healthy of you. You have boundaries. Yeah. Focused on your health and self-care. Oh, hey, this isn't. <laughs> you are enlightened. Yes, that's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> Final question. You're Eugene now, the chick, all right? Yeah, your fiance, <clears throat> your fiance is Hang Yuk. After you dumped him to be with Min Hyung, he attempted suicide. Oh, bummer. And not and well, he's at he's at the hospital. Not only that, but you hear from somebody that your dad fathered Min Hyung, and you find out that Min Hyung is losing his eyesight. And this is a man you're in love with. What do you do? Um, I mean, I'm in love with the other guy, right? Not the suicide dude. I'm like, hey, buddy, sorry, <laughs> and I go, I go to the guy I love. Hey, sorry, suicide man, but uh, uh, might as well try again because it's not working. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I uh, what? What was? Do I know about Song Hyuk's dad? Um. Why was he? Were they in like a weird thruple situation? <laughs> they like were with... in a weird thruple situation. Here's the truth. Like objective truth is that your fiance's dad is actually Min Hyung's dad. Okay. But Min Hyung's mom lied and said that oh, your right. dad, brother, now. Dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, I, um... uh, yeah. But your right now in your the only thing you know is that your the man you love, your boyfriend Min Hyung, is your brother, and he's going blind. That's all you know. What do you do? He's going blind. I'm like, man, this will be. Thank God for this blindness thing, because this will be easy to ghost my sex brother. So I'll probably just, <laughs> I'm guessing I would take a shower for a long time, and then I'd ghost my blind uh, brother that I've had sex with. That's what I'd do. Good. I'd be like, whew, that is, that is a lot. I'm just going to cut you out of my life. And uh, I'm going to apologize to the guy who just committed suicide, who will happily take me back, because he just tried to commit suicide. Yeah. So he's desperate, you know, he'll be like, yeah. oh, my God, thank you. And you're like, <laughs> dodge that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phew. Um, but I, yeah. Wait. So the only thing, so is, did Song Hyuk's dad also, like, he was banging the, the mom at the same time? He was a married man who had a son who gave birth to Sang Yuk in his marriage, but he started philandering with the the this lady on the side, bawling the side chick, and she got pregnant and gave birth to Min Hyung, who is now blind. That's what happened. So it could be so it could be that other guy's dead? Or do we know for sure? So the truth is that Sang Hyuk's dad and Min Hyuk's dad are the same. It's the same sperm. But Min Hyung's mother lied to her son and said that Yujin's dad is his dad. The reason oh, why so, she lied is because it's not. It's not. It's not. The reason why she lied is because this single mom was always in love with Yujin's dad, but Yujin's dad was not interested in her. And so she just created this lie to live a fantasy vicariously. But it turns out, you know, 
it was fucking her son's Damn. life up because now she thinks he thinks that he's in an incestuous relationship with the woman that he loves and it's not the case oh so now but i don't know that as eugen you so know I'm, nobody so i'm actually going drama, now so now i'm going back to bang my brother without knowing it i guess <laughs> i guess is that right I guess, okay. I guess. Yeah. yeah, the heart wants what it wants, even though it's your What tangle brother. webs we weave, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Willie. You're the best. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. This was a lot of fun.